Hello, welcome to WTF Stories and Advice. I'm Louisa Delden. And I'm Caroline Cranshaw. And you are a... I'm a fucking know-it-all, but I always say that. I'm a hypnotherapist and a life coach and a sex therapist. Weight loss. <laughs> I just like to tell people what to do. You do. <laughs> you've, you've given me a fair amount of life advice. And it's really because I've been so fucked up my whole life that I can help you with your problems now. You, you yeah. can. <laughs> sometimes, not... sometimes I'm like, mm, is this the advice I should be taking? <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's why, like, you know, some of our promotions we say bad advice. Yeah. You know, what the fuck? Yeah, we don't want to be advice? saying shit and then people going, you two are batshit crazy. <laughs> don't take advice from them. Yeah. But, you know. For me, I actually do know what I'm talking about some of the time. And, uh, yeah, I probably like to play it down. But anyways. I last time um, spoke about how I was going to the Celine Dion concert. Oh, God, Jesus Christ, help me. Yeah, She was <laughs> phenomenal. Like, honestly, voice of an angel. She would had these outrageous outfit changes. She was a full diva. Yeah. Probably had like five outfit changes. Nice. So hot for 50. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she looks gorgeous. But um, <sighs> what did you do? There, there may have been a wee bit of an incident. <laughs> I'd expect nothing less. What I happened? Know. I just get myself in these terrible situations. I don't know how that happens, Louisa. No, me I'm such a good girl. <laughs> um, so, anyway, we ended up preloading quite heavily. Yeah. And we preloading means getting fucking wasted before you go out for I anyone mean, who doesn't know. Not yeah. that. Yeah, okay, yeah. you could say that. <laughs> um and so we arrived and the four people that I were with were all like, right, let's all buy the maximum amount of drinks you can get so we don't have to move from our seats. So you oh, could buy yeah. five at a time. Can you? Yes. <laughs> so How do you I mean even carry five uh, drinks you, back yeah, to your well thing? wait, that's that's a good <laughs> question because so we, we get up to our seats, prime seats. You know, she's yeah. like right in our view. We're not nice. even that far back. Um, turns out most people who are sitting around us are from work. Oh, no. So, <laughs> I mean, it's not a good start. Because, well, Louisa is a producer for one of the top radio stations. So yeah, there's And there's lots of radio stations not at work. What one. No, we're not going to say which one. But just so you get an idea, lots of music industry, radio yes. industry people. So there were a lot of – I saw someone from HR there. You know, like there, everyone was there. And um, – one of the guys that I was with, thank God it wasn't me. He, we, like this wasn't even because, he, well, probably it was because he was a little bit drunk, but he accidentally tipped maybe half of a drink on the people in front of us. And yeah. he was so apologetic. He was like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, if there was anyone else, like if that was me, I'd be like, oh, good dude. Like, don't worry about it. Like on top Chill. of their head or yeah, a bit like on their maybe a bit on their sweater and maybe a little bit on their hair. So yeah. like kind of mellow. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> from that, they hated us yeah they absolutely hated us we were the only ones like dancing and singing so we were standing up and dancing and singing oh. and we, yeah, it, oh. yeah, we were when people drunk. sit there like with a carrot know, up their ass and then they keep getting real mouthy and sassy turning around to us and then eventually <laughs> security <laughs> came <laughs> up and we had to go outside and have a chat with security and one of the guys that i was with was being like we paid for these seats blah, which blah, you blah, didn't blah, blah. but anyways um and <laughs> i could probably Probably say that I reckon we are probably the only four people in the whole entire world who have ever been kicked out of a Celine Dion concert. <laughs> For raging too hard. Yeah. So it's, I mean, I'll chuck it on my CV. It's almost a, um, it's almost a, something, yeah, something that's, you should be proud of. That's such a good idea. Like has been kicked out of a Celine Dion concert yeah. for partying too hard. If anyone has been kicked out of a Celine Dion concert for partying too hard, please send us an email or yeah. any concert. I'd like to know. Yeah. Yeah. Those are um, always good stories. Yeah. But I will say another thing, maybe why they went and got the security is because in the morning when I watched back my Instagram stories, um, yeah. I am tone deaf. You can hear me in the yeah. background like, <laughs> when you kiss me like this, and when you touch me like that, <laughs> like ruining it for everyone around me. I think everyone who listens to this podcast already knows that because you sang quite a pet. Yeah. True. I sang, I sang all last podcast. But who can sing Celine Dion well? Like nobody. No I'm sorry. The, yeah. I will say the opening act for her yeah. was this girl who, or well, this lady who impersonates um, like Adele, Britney Spears, Madonna, oh, Whitney wow. Houston. She was insane. As soon as she sang Whitney, everyone was just silent. It sounded identical to her. Is she Asian? 
No, her no. name's Veroni DeClear. Oh, okay. Because I saw some so girl. Good. My daughter was showing me some girl on YouTube who was doing the same. And yeah, amazing. Maybe it's kind of like a trend to imitate the. Um, I just, how the hell do they do it? I can't even sing like one of them. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't I don't know. I can't them. even sing in tune. No, me neither. I would love to be able to be a really good singer. I know. Um, I have this course by it's what's it called Masterclass, and it's oh some, yeah, and it's some class by. Christina Aguilera teaches you to sing. You can do that with like Oprah and like Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, they have their I have master classes. all the classes. I have all the classes because mm-hmm. you just spend. I think it's like 180 bucks, and you get all of them. So of course, I had to buy the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the Christina Aguilera, there's this thing on it where you can figure out what your range is. And oh, did you do it? Uh, yeah, you know I did it with my daughter. Right? You have to play it back to us. Oh, uh, no, 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 it doesn't record it. Thank fuck, because <laughs> I think like all the neighborhood cats would like surround us and try to like, does she in. teach you how to go? Well, they get you to just they play a note and then you have to like, you know, it's like ding and you have to go e, you know, yeah. and it was like it was so fucking you bad. Real high you're, you're, you're like. Ee! You're like, I think I probably just shattered someone's eardrum there. But, oh, my God, it's pretty fucking funny. But then they make you this MP3. I'll let you do it on my thing. And it will make you an MP3 that's, like, in your range that gives you, like, exercises to sing. Mm. And I, I've never even listened to the MP3 and listened to it in practice. Yeah. But it's really fucking cool. So I quite you should like check to out. That. Christina Aguilar is a badass. But the thing with her is she's like, I don't really, you know, I haven't really had any training. Because she just fucking naturally. They can belt yeah. it out. But I love her in the movie Burley. <gasps> That's one of my favorite movies of all time. She's so good in it. She is. Such a babe. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen the TV series um, First Dates? Yeah, I love that show. Yeah. So there's a um, video that's going viral at the moment, basically of a guy and a girl who've gone on a date. Yeah. And um, Warner Brothers have come out and said that those dates – they don't actually like Warner Brothers don't pay for them, so it's actually up to the people who are on the date to decide who pays and you know that's like bullshit. But I guess they like that no, awkwardness. Yeah, though. that's what I mean. That's exactly why they do it. So I actually understand why they do mm. that. But so there's a video that's gone viral, and it's this um twenty something girl yeah. and guy, and he goes, "Oh, do you want to split the bill?" And she basically says, "Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have any money at the moment." And they're a really nice restaurant at Sky City. Yeah. So obviously it's going to be quite pricey. And she said, oh, I didn't think I needed to bring money. And the guy was like, do you just expect that the man will pay? So then it's kind of gone into this big thing. It's like, oh, well, that's sexist that you assume that straight away the guy will just pay on a first date. I've always had that expectation. Yeah, you're going to pay most of the time unless I really don't like you. If I, Well, and even then it's like actually this is compensation for my time. Because I don't you're like, I have wasted an hour and a half here. I have me to listen to your fucking drivel, so you're going to pay. You are paying for my Pinot and pasta. I, yeah, I I would rarely pay. No, you can fucking pay, bitch. No, I'm sorry. Like, sorry, that was a bit strong. No, I'm, I'm the same as you. Not in like a snobby way, but I think if a guy has asked you on a date, yeah. then you are kind of under the impression that, they will pay for it. And I'm not one of those people who are like, oh, the guy always pays. I'll happily go out for lunch with the guy and be like, oh, I'll get this one. Like, it's not like that. But I think in a first circumstance, if someone has gone out of their way to be like, hey, would you like to get a drink? Mm-hmm. Sort of under the impression. Now, I don't know. Is that bad? No. I, that's a fucking given. I'm sorry. But you're like, <laughs> you are so ruthless. You're like, <laughs> bitch, you are paying now. For me, I saw it as a test. That if they if they were yeah. like immediately like oh should we split it I'm like yeah you're not fucking me nah you're done sorry <laughs> yeah like sorry not sorry oh, so, they, you... so basically that's prostitution no if you well, pay for the state no oh, it's well, not pro- well I'm sorry everybody pays in some way especially I'm if you're a man kidding. you don't pay for dick dick is a bad investment I'm sorry <laughs> oh my god you are out the gate <laughs> no it's true. I'm sorry, doesn't Chris Rock do something about that, about how dick is always a bad investment? And he was like talking about some gynecologist saying to some woman about her vagina's dropping, um, drying up because she's been paying for like dick, you know? He's like, you're six months away from menopause, bitch. You better, yeah, dick is always a bad investment. I'm sorry, you pay for pussy. That's the way I look at it. Like Louisa's face oh is God, horrified like right now. I like read. I feel like I'm just like prude. Ah. <laughs> Grow up. No, I'm sorry. Maybe that's more my generation. But, yeah, and I'm happy to pay, like, 
with my partner, you know, we, we both pay for things and I don't expect him to pay for everything, but I think it's just a bit of a test to show a man's generosity yeah, and a willingness to look after you and to, I don't know, it's, and maybe it's traditional and old fashioned and I hear guys go on about it and I'm like, yeah, you don't get laid much. And it's, it's because of this whole, um, gender equality sort of thing that's just so big at the moment that's why the guy basically said oh that's you know a bit sexist the fact that she automatically assumed that he was going to pay yeah well life's life's not fucking fair if you haven't figured that out right now then yeah you're gonna be disappointed yeah i don't yeah the article then goes on about um obviously like work workplaces yeah because i often have one of the guys that i work with at work say that he feels like he can't say to a woman i know oh, you look really good today I know because exactly instantly yeah instantly he's like oh well, you know are they going to think i'm being creepy are they going to complain to hr when he's genuinely just being like you look really nice unfortunately that's just the way the world's gone yeah and, it's and how, the what, perverts have ruined now. it for everyone know. you know what i mean because i've certainly had creepy guys that you're like fuck off dude yeah. like yeah they just make comments that make you incredibly uncomfortable but it, it also depends on the person you're saying it to. Because I know for a fact if a guy said to me, oh, you look really nice there, I'd be like, oh, cheers. I'd be yeah. really stoked. Same. I'd be like, damn right I do. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> yeah, you. I know. I'm not, yeah, and you hear about these women that are like, what do you mean? Do I not look nice every other day? And they like have some fucking hissy fit and then go on about sexual harassment. Yeah. It's like it's like um, men who open the door for women. Like some yeah. guy opened the door for me recently and I was like, oh, thank you. And he was like, oh. He was like, I was almost didn't do it because the last time I did it, some woman bit my head off and said yeah. she can open her own fucking door and blah, blah, blah. You For know? some guys, it's like a breath of fresh air when a woman actually takes oh, a compliment. I think there's nothing wrong with chivalry, or I can't even say the word, chivalry? Chivalry? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, males and females, we have different energy, and there is that dance of like polarity and masculine energy and feminine energy and i think women are just trying to take on too much masculine energy and it just it's like a buzzkill yeah like, yeah it's it's you in every relationship you have to have the masculine and feminine even if the people are the same sex it's like one will always have a slightly more masculine and one will have slightly more feminine it's the way it works but yeah i don't know me too movement me too movement i think is great mm -hmm. i think good on women for saying anything saying something and speaking up and people need to be empowered but that's i mean it's not just for women it's for men no, as well agreed agreed men need to come out because men are being sexually harassed or abused by men and women so i think it's like everyone has a right to speak up about harassment but yeah it's like you know what just fucking calm down and don't get so uppity and freaked out about everything because yeah you got to have some humor in life and not yeah, take let someone so open the door for you i know let or someone say you look good yeah and if they're a creep about it tell them to shut the fuck up but you know learn to accept a compliment so that's my opinion <laughs> i'm so subtle about it aren't i <laughs> So last time or last podcast, um, I talked about how to handle difficult people. And part of what I've learned with that is from doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me of a story or, or a time when I really didn't handle some difficult people well. I so. can't imagine you ever not handling <laughs> difficult people. I so just feel like you put people in their place. <laughs> Yeah, but sometimes people don't like to be put in their place. True, and, and then that, it backfires. And, then, and that can create some conflict. So this would probably be, it's got to be over a year ago. It was, it, was, it was right before the U.S. election. And we got invited to dinner at some um, friends that are kind of, it's, the guy is a work colleague of my partner's. And they're a lovely couple, really gorgeous and so we get to their house and they're like oh we invited another american couple so caroline you'll have a lot in common with them and i just had this sinking feeling of oh fuck just so, because we're american yeah. doesn't mean that we're gonna get along that we're gonna get along and, and normal you know i mean americans are fucking cool of course i think so but some of them aren't <laughs> but that's true of every culture you know like every place there's great people and then there's assholes so they come and they seem nice enough and they're kind of they're from the midwest and i just knew <laughs> i know exactly what you're gonna say 
that they were Republicans. And there's nothing wrong with being a Republican. I, you know, I love politics and I'm very into politics and I love a good debate. And you're totally allowed to have your opinion about politics, but I'm allowed to have mine as well. And I'm allowed to fucking disagree with you. Oh God, I can <laughs> so, already imagine what this dinner table is like. So yeah. And they seem nice enough. We sit down to dinner and I just couldn't fucking help myself. And I'm like, so who are we voting for? Oh, so you started oh, Of course I did. How I can't you, help how myself. How are you starting this conversation with how to deal with difficult people? No, no, no. You are the difficult one I'm, bringing uh, it up. I, the reason why I'm saying this is because I, yeah, like I, I yeah, I am someone who. You wanted to feel the fire. I, I love a good debate. Like when I grew up, my family would debate over politics. We would get in screaming arguments that would go into like personal attacks. <laughs> but, you know, at the end it was like, oh, hey, yeah, thanks. Dessert. Who wants a coffee? And, you know, like Italian Americans. Yeah. It was it was intense. I know. You know exactly I know the Italian about. vibe. And so yeah, so we sit down. I'm like, who are we voting for? And they were like, oh, Trump, isn't he great? You know, he's going to make America great again and blah, blah, blah. And, I, you know, my poor partner was just like, oh, God, here oh, we go. A can of worms. Yeah, and I do not think that Trump is making America great again. Or, yeah, at that point, at that point, I actually knew he was going to be elected. Not that I voted for him, but I knew he was going to be elected because of people, people just weren't feeling Hillary's vibe. Mm -hmm. And I think people were disenfranchised with a little thing, a lot of things. And I thought they really thought he could make some major, major changes. There's, I mean, there may be people listening to this who are supporters of him. I am not. So yeah, we went back and forth for, I'm not even kidding you, two hours. Was it just you and the other two? No, Grant, my partner, was backing me up. He fully oh my God, had my so fucking back. Thank God. Couple on couple. Couple on couple. The poor. It sounds like a couple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not like that. No, there was definitely no <laughs> swinging going on here. I'd. Oh, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> The, the the host uh, couple was sitting at either end of the table just looking back and forth in literal horror because they were just like, oh, my God. And they were saying things like, oh, you know, he's such a good businessman. You know, I think he's going to save the economy. And like my partner was like, oh, you mean like he was bankrupt six times? And they were like, well, at least he gives it a go. And I'm like, oh, yeah, give it a go with the American economy. What could happen? You know, and it was like, oh, I'm talking about how he's racist. And we went on and on. But like. For me, I can have a good debate and it's that's fine. You're allowed to have your opinion. I'm not going to not like you or yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going to disagree. So you were imagine how you're imagining this is you'd have your debate and then you'd be like, "Oh, does it?" Yeah. Carry but on. he the husband got personal. I can't even remember what he said because I probably had a bottle of red wine by this point. Two. And <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> And probably half a bottle of champagne. So I was pretty drunk. But yeah, he just kept going on. Oh, I think he said, well, you're a woman, so your opinion doesn't count <gasps> anyways. No, he so didn't. So I ran around the table, started choking the man and wait, screaming. Wait, wait, <laughs> no, wait, 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 <laughs> stop, pause. Yes. You got not up hard. from your seat. I got up from my seat. I ran. You and choked this man I, I, at the dining table. I attempted... In, in jest, in jest, I was being funny. I was I was only half serious. Oh, so it was kind of like, oh, you little. Uh, yeah, I'm going to. And I said, I'm going to hypnotize you to have a limp dick for the rest of your life. But I started squeezing, right? And he's like trying to pull me off. So then his wife's like, don't you put that voodoo on my husband. You're cursing me. And so we're all three of us are struggling. So Grant just literally walks up, picks me up under his arm and is like, time to go. Bye. Thanks for dinner. <laughs> like it's like, and I'm like, Wah! Yeah. I can't <laughs> believe you got up from the table, ran around and gave him a wee choke. Ch just a light, just a gentle choke. I wasn't, like, if I was serious, I would have tried to claw his throat out. Um, <laughs> oh, ah, God. when you're a woman and you're... You are oh. the most hard case person that I have ever met. Oh, it was, you know, and we we're all <laughs> laughing and I, yeah... I don't know. Anyways, was I had to. laughing? <laughs> this little blonde girl I was around with her claws. Oh, I, was I, was, I was trying to throttle him, to be honest. I was just so like, you need you need to wake up and feel the, my fingers around your throat. Any, but it was, you know, it wasn't, well, it was kind of serious. Anyways, <laughs> I had to apologize to the other couple on numerous occasions. <laughs> yeah. Had they invited you back for a dinner party? Hell no. Are you so, still mates with them? 
Yeah. Oh, they're, they're lovely. So they're very friendly. And yeah, I, the next time I saw them was at um, my partner's work Christmas do. And the woman like looks at me and she's sitting at a table with a whole bunch of other women. So I come up and I'm like, I'm really sorry for trying to choke your other dinner guest and blah, blah, blah. I've been telling them you had a limp dick. I just said it in front of everyone because I don't give a fuck. You should have seen the woman, all the other women all look at me like, what the hell? And I was like, oh, well, you know, this guy was a Trump supporter and he told me, you know, something about women's opinion doesn't matter. So I tried to choke him and I said I was going to hypnotize him to have this limp dick for the rest of his life. And that's how the evening ended. Rule the woman like, go power. No, uh, no, actually they weren't. They were more like horrified and probably think I'm insane. (laughs) Vehicle. So the thing is, I, yeah, I didn't handle that situation. Well, (laughs) I am a hard case. Like I do like to have a bit of fun and I, I will entertain at at dinner parties. On our radio show, you see (laughs) the clit as the new dick at prime time. Kids in the car. (laughs) I didn't. No, I said, your clit is like your dick and you have to be okay with playing with your dick is what I did say. But anyways, I digress. Uh, You're like, don't quote me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> like when <laughs> I talk about clits and dicks, <laughs> quote me correctly. <laughs> the thing is, is that, yeah, I didn't handle that well. Yeah. I acted like a total idiot, but you know what? I have a great story to tell now. <laughs> and I think that you, oh, yeah. it's you're not tell the grandkids. Sometimes you're going to act like a crazy idiot or people are going to push your buttons and you're going to lose it. And, you know, try not to choke people out like I did. Um, obviously, I didn't actually hurt the guy and he could have like just body slammed me in about two seconds. <laughs> but, you know, it was more in fun. But yeah, I think it's like you got to accept it when you go crazy and you can just use that to enter. enter- entertain people with the story of it. I bet everyone is laughing. Yeah, well, I don't know. Probably not if you're a Trump supporter. (laughs) But yeah, that's how I handled that one. Not well. So we've been getting some pretty cool emails with stories. We read an amazing one last oh time. Oh my God, the one we so, told last time. If you haven't heard it, go back and listen to the last podcast oh my God. because it is out the gate. Yeah. So here's another one that's really good. Hey, Louisa and Caroline, enough with the niceties. Let's get right to the good stuff. When I was seven or eight, I started having dreams and they would actually come true. If not the next day, then within a month. It scared me and I told my mom. She told my... She took me to my great aunt's house and she told me it was a gift not to be afraid and that one day I would need to use it. Ooh. Yes. That's creepy. If I had some dreams that came true, I'd be like, fuck this. I've always had that my whole life. You don't don't have dreams that come true? I'm like, what? That's not normal. I always have that. What? So you have a dream and then it would happen in like a week? Yeah. No, that's fucked. No. (laughs) That's never happened to me in my life. That's happened to me so, you know, in my first marriage... You I dreamed, would you were, I would dream all the time, of, anyways, of s- stuff that people were getting up to. And so my ex-husband's friends used to call me Alison Dubois, um, which was a show from The Medium, where oh, she'd yeah. always have these dreams and they would come true and it was kind of how you know what I'm like, thinking of? The, what? The, the TV show from Disney called That's So Raven, where she has those oh. visions. She's like, <laughs> and then they come true. No? Not quite the same? No. <laughs> I think that's beyond my uh, generation. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Immediately after that, I started seeing a figure sitting on the couch at night at the end of the hallway when I went to bed for the night. Sporadically, I would see shadows out of the corner of my eye, but when I looked, no one would be there. Do you have that too, Louisa? No. I, Do you? Yeah. Anyways. You're mental. <laughs> like sometimes you I'll already be like, know that. Yeah, true. Sometimes I'll be like, oh, what was that? But like not all the time. One day, a couple years later, I saw my great aunt on her front porch, which was weird because she never left the house. I ran to my mom's room so she could answer the door. Kids weren't allowed to answer the door at our house. Good policy. Well, I think that's just me interjecting. When I told my mom who was at the door, she sat down and began to cry. She explained to me and my sisters that our great aunt had died that morning and she was waiting for the right time to tell us. My sister yelled at me and called me a liar, but I know what I saw. My great aunt had looked right at me through the window. She even smiled at me. That was the beginning. Ooh, I have goose pimples. Fast forward, I'm around 24. I'm at home doing the laundry, bent over sorting clothes, and I see something behind me. This is in the middle of the fucking day. I thought it was my son crouching down trying to scare me. So I quickly turned to scare him, but it wasn't him. It was a man, but not really a man 
When I saw it, it vanished. And after that, all hell began breaking loose. Oh, I'm just, I'm covered oh in goose gosh, pimples right now. Ghosts. I started getting up every night at 2.45 a.m. I'd be wide awake and really thirsty. One night I drank a gallon of orange juice. I woke up one morning and I had eaten an entire pack of cigarettes. Well, I just like back- munched them <laughs> or like smoked them. No, eaten. Just munched them. <laughs> munched a pack of darts. <laughs> Wow. Tobacco was stuck to my mouth and all over the sofa and floor in my teeth. <laughs> Sorry, just disgusting. I'm just picturing this like mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so dry. Oh, that's terrible. Like, that's real, like, sleep terror. I don't know. Anyways, one night my son was in my bed with me sleeping and I was watching a movie. I heard someone wiggling the doorknob at the front door. I thought it was an ex. I'd re- recently broke up with him and I yelled at him to go home and continued to watch the movie. Until I heard the front door open. Oh God, no. I know, I was scared. No. I muted the movie, uncertain of what I heard, and began listening harder. And then I heard something like kids giggling or kind of a screeching noise. Then I heard fingernails scraping oh my the God, walls. No. And was as whatever it was came up the stairs. I threw the covers over my son so I looked like I was the only thing in the bed. And I watched as a dark cloud figure floated into my bedroom. <gasps> I'm like, so (laughs) your face is terrifying. I don't want to go to sleep tonight. It floated up to my face and started going into my mouth. It was cold and I was paralyzed. It reminds me of the Dementors from Harry Potter. Have you seen that? The black things that fly around with no faces. That's what I'm imagining. It started freezing my teeth and throat, but I managed to say, please don't hurt my child. And then it vanished. I threw the covers back, grabbed my son with one hand, and ran down the stairs, grabbed my keys and cell phone by the front door, drove to my ex's house. We didn't even have clothes on. <laughs> um, <laughs> she named. Okay. I don't know if that part of the story needed to be included, but oh, carry that's on. fucking funny. She probably meant like we were in our pajamas, yeah, you know? Like just nude. <laughs> I'm just imagining <laughs> nude running down the stairs like in the car through the drive through naked. Well, it adds to the story, doesn't it? <laughs> My ex came back with us, checked the house, and told me it was a dream, but the movie I was watching was still on, and I hadn't lost any time. Weird stuff continued to happen, always at night, and I'd always be paralyzed. I could see and move my eyes a little, but nothing more. I was just at the mercy of this thing. Sometimes a dark figure, sometimes I couldn't see it, but I felt its presence, and you could tell it was evil. It got to the point where I was afraid to sleep at night. As the years went on, it became clear that this entity was connected to me. It never bothered anything or anyone else, and I lived in three different residences, so it couldn't be tied to the house. I learned to live with it, even though it terrified me. It's a demon or an omen. I know. One night, I was staying at my grandma's. I had to sleep in a pitch black room. I knew I'd have a problem doing this. For the first time in years, there was no TV where I was sleeping, and I couldn't bring to ask my grandmother to leave the hallway light on. Yeah, because you'd be like, Grandma! Can I have the light on? Leave the door open. I woke up paralyzed. This thing climbed on top of me and I could feel it pushing down on me. I pushed back, not physically, but it's kind of hard to explain. I know what she's talking about. Sleep paralysis is freaking terrifying. Then I felt myself sit up. I pushed out. I had pushed out of paralysis, but my motor function was slow and awkward feeling. As I got out of bed, I didn't feel like myself. I slowly made my way to the bedroom, but it was like driving a car with a stiff steering wheel. I made my way into my grandmother's room, but I couldn't talk. I don't think she even could see me at first, even though she was sitting up in bed watching TV. But then she eerily turned her head, looked directly at me and said, I don't know what you are, but get out of this house. I managed to wake, make my way up to her bedside and she looked directly at me and said, I know you're still here. Get out. Oh, my God. So basically she was like out of her body. And walked into the grandmother's room. I have such good. Oh my god! Wait, so like the grandma could tell there was something. It in was her like body. a spirit. No, there was like a spirit. Like oh. no, like she wasn't. There. She wasn't solid. She wasn't in her body. Oh. But she was like the. She was like there because you can feel it when like a spirit's in the room. I've done. I've had conversations oh like oh, that where I'm like, get out! I can't sleep. Anyways. I went back to the room I was staying in. I was shocked and completely freaked out because I was still laying in the bed. I realized I had left my own body. That entity was still in the corner of the room just standing there. I didn't know what to do. Was I dead? Had that thing killed me? Where was the glorious light? And if I wasn't dead, how can I get back inside of my body? What if I'm trapped like this? I eventually calmed down and decided to lay down on top of my body, and I woke up the next morning. I got up okay, went to the kitchen, and talked to my grandmother about what happened the night before. My grandmother remembered speaking to me, but said she didn't see anything. She just felt something in the room with her. 
Told you. Next few years, I'm completely terrorized every night. I was so exhausted from a lack of sleep. Life became unbearable. This entity grabbed me by my ankles and almost dragged me from the bed. He pulled me into my bedroom closet, locked me inside. Some nights while I was fuck? paralyzed. Why doesn't she get like some type of demon guru to get rid of it? <laughs> well, who do you go to? I don't know. Like, you One know. One of the mediums from TV? Someone from Sensing well, Murder? Well, they didn't have Sensing Murder back then. One of the nights when I was paralyzed, it would simply sit at the edge of the, edge of the bed and rub my leg like it was reminding me it was still here. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. My sis- grandmother's sister was a Catholic, so I knew their priest. He was a young black guy named Father Thomas. I called his parish and I left a voicemail. He immediately called me back. I reminded him who, uh, of who I was and he remembered. I figured that Catholics always dealt with demons. Maybe he'd believe me. He actually did better than believe me. He stopped before I could tell him much of my story and began to tell me everything I was going through. He asked me one simple question. Had the entity ever hurt me? In all my fear, I realized I've never been hurt, not one scratch. He explained that it had no power over me, that I was more powerful than it, which is why it was forcing me to lose sleep. And it was trying to weaken me. I was giving my energy to it through fearing it. It was so evil and hated me. Why hadn't it done anything other than scare me? He told me to talk to it and demand it leave me alone, tell it that it had no power over me. He told me to stop fearing that it was harmless. The only thing I needed to remember was to say in the name of Jesus when I spoke to it. This is like, because didn't I, I talked about some crazy experiences yeah, I had. Voodoo and, man, you yeah, and how to remember that entities or spirits don't have more power yeah, but than then you. Think of Paranormal Activity, the movie. I don't, I don't watch that shit. Okay, well, that the, shit is the spirit creepy thing kills them. Well, it shouldn't be able to kill you. Okay, that's a movie and it's probably not real. So yeah, yeah, let's hope not. Today I'm okay. I'm not a religious person, but I am spiritual. I meditate and I keep positive energy, peace, and joy a constant in my life. I think negativity feeds on negativity and a negative en- entity can't thrive in a positive space. Yes. The same way darkness can't exist in light. I still feel things from time to time, usually in medical facilities, sometimes in people's homes. I don't fear them most of the time. And when I do, I remind myself that it cannot hurt me. I know this went on forever, but I hope this helps someone. If you read all of this, thanks for listening. That's cool. That is thank so, you. Yeah, thank you so much for your email. That is terrifying and I know. go girl for but, getting rid of this like, yeah but i think this is something that some people have that whole sleep paralysis or things bugging you it at night honestly terrifies me if i saw anything like that there's no chance that i would sleep ever again touch wood <laughs> touch wood <laughs> well you would eventually no, but no. yeah i think that's the thing to remember is that you are more powerful than it because you are spirit and physical mm. and if it's not true, if that's all a delusion, then it's not fucking real anyway. So yeah. what does it matter? You know? So either way, you're, you're okay. Good. You're yeah. So I think it is that, yeah, I think I always remember to go, you know, I'm stronger than you. Imagine an eraser is another one. Like and just I'm gonna erase your ass if you don't leave. And yeah. But I've had so many clients with stories like this. It's not even funny. Yeah, you've told me so many. It terrifies me because yeah. I'm petrified of ghosts and I used to have it all, all the time, shit. and then I got to a point where it was, like, happening too much, and I just went, I don't want clients like that anymore. Let them go to somebody else, and I just don't get them anymore. Like, once in a blue moon, I'll have someone talk about it, but, yeah, not like I used to. So, mm. I don't know, but now I teach hypnotherapy, so I teach other therapists how to deal with deal, this type yeah. of stuff, and that to not treat your client like they're crazy. Like, I think that's what sometimes multiple personality is or people that like lose time or schizophrenia. I don't think it's just mental illness. I think it's like a spiritual illness or a spiritual crisis that's going on. Like the voice outside of your head, that might be spirits talking to you. Yeah. So anyways, on that positive note. The world is a messed up place. <laughs> yeah, well, it's certainly interesting. Thank you for listening to our latest episode of WTF Stories and Advice. Give us a follow on Instagram. I'm um, Louisa DD, L U I S A D D. Not for the reason you think, because clearly not. <laughs> well, they don't know that. True. I'm going to pretend, yes, it's for the reason you think it is. <laughs> no, it's because my last name is Delden. Yeah, and I'm what? I, I never know you how never to know say this. You're at Caroline Cranshaw. I'm at Caroline Cranshaw. Yeah. yeah. And there's only one of us in the world, apparently. Yeah. There's only one Louisa Delton as oh. well. We are unique. We are so unique. 
Yeah, so give us a follow. And the other thing is send us your stories. Yes, we love hearing your stories. WTF at stories and advice at Gmail. I think that's it. W- yeah, How WTF fucking- stories and advice at Gmail. Yeah. Or Facebook them to us or DM us. Yeah. Direct message for you, oldie. <laughs> hey. It's on Instagram. <laughs> Fetch. <laughs> <laughs> and Give us a review and like too. I know yeah. we're we're like we're now we're just telling you what the fuck to do, but hey, but do it, do it. We need encouragement. So yeah, that's us. Bye. Bye. Bye.